First of all, I want to thank all of you very much for being here this morning. We're honored to have some of our nation's most accomplished medical experts and practitioners working on the front lines, uh, and they are here to testify today. Today, the committee will be examining legislation that could significantly increase access to treatment across the country for those suffering from substance use disorder. Substance use disorder is a generational public health crisis, but most people suffering from it are not able to get the evidence-based treatment that they so urgently need. More than 270,000 Americans died from drug overdoses from, from 2013 to 2017. Despite this staggering loss of life, a study based on the National Survey on Drug Use and Health found that of those who have substance use disorder, only, and I quote, only 10.8 percent receive specialty treatment, end of quote. The National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine reported earlier this year that in 2016, just 36 percent of the specialty treatment facilities offered any form of FDA-approved medication for opioid use disorder. It concluded, quote, only 6 percent of facilities offered all three medications, end of quote approved to treat this disease. The National Academies also warned, and I quote, efforts to date have made no real headway in stemming this crisis in large part because tools that are already in existence, like evidence-based medications, are not being deployed to maximum impact. The response of the administration and Congress has been woefully inadequate. For the entire first two years of the Trump administration, the President failed to issue a national drug control strategy, even though it was required by law. Finally, this past January, the administration released its first strategy, but it failed to meet even the most basic requirements of the law. Even more shocking, its stated goal is to reduce the overdose deaths by only 15 percent over the next five years. And ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced that we can do better than that. Not only can we do better than that, we must do better than that, because these are people's children, their mothers, their fathers, their classmates who are dying, and there are so many in the pipeline to die. And so let me put all of that into context. Even if the administration reaches its stated goal, more than 200,000 Americans will still die of overdoses by 2022. Congress has also failed to act with the urgency this crisis demands. Last year, Congress passed the Support Act. Although that bill took small steps to expand treatment, it only nibbled at the edges of this generational health crisis. Meanwhile, nearly 200 Americans continue <coughs> to die every single day during this epidemic. The CARE Act offers a comprehensive, evidence-based approach to getting people the treatment they need to save their lives, and is endorsed by the medical professionals across the country. The CARE Act is co-sponsored by more than 100 members of the House, including every single Democratic member of this committee. Even the Trump Administration's director of the Office of Drug Control Policy, 
Jim Curl has commended, and I quote, calling it the heart and the spirit of this legislation is something that he likes. The CARE Act would apply the proven model we have adopted on a bipartisan basis to fight HIV AIDS, the AIDS epidemic. I can remember when people questioned whether or not we would be able to address AIDS. And we have done an effective job. Is there more to do? Yes. But we didn't just throw up our hands and say, let folk die. We said we are going to do something about it. So the CARE Act would authorize $10 billion per year to provide States and local communities with stable funding to build a robust treatment infrastructure. And what we are talking about is effective and efficient treatment. I am not talking about people that throw up a shop uh, on the corner, like I see some, some places in my town, and distribute certain types of medications and then call themselves giving people treatment. Um, I am talking about real evidence-based treatment. And it would expand access to medication uh, assistant uh, treatment and the wraparound services uh, that are necessary. It would incentivize state to incentivize states to adopt model standards for treatment programs and recovery uh, residences. It would provide $500 million per year to buy the overdose antidote naloxone and distribute it to first responders, public health offices, and the public. The CARE Act has been endorsed by more than 200 organizations. For example, the American Medical Association has endorsed the CARE Act, noting, quote, the CARE Act is intended to fill the current funding gap and sets up a framework to do so, end of quote. The American Society of Addiction Medicine supports the CARE Act because it will, quote, help communities of all shapes and sizes provide critically needed and evidence-based addiction prevention, treatment, engagement, and recovery services. The American Psychological Association endorsed the CARE Act, noting that, quote, the CARE Act acknowledges that a fundamental requirement for successfully addressing the drug overdose epidemic is treating the whole person. Finally, the National Nurses United endorsed the CARE Act and wrote, in order to effectively combat this horrible epidemic and save the lives of our patients, it is necessary for the members of this committee and the members of Congress in full to commit to fully fund the response to the opioid crisis. We urge you to support and pass the Comprehensive Addiction Resources Emergency Act of 2019 and look forward to working with you to do so. I have often said that at 68, uh, I have been seeing this drug problem a long time. Uh, the first person that I have ever heard of, uh, of dying of an overdose was somebody who died in my neighborhood uh, when I was eight years old. And uh, I didn't even know what an overdose was. But the fact is that I have seen many people die over the years. But we have not come here just to speak for those who, are died, who have died. We have come to speak for the living and the dead. Um, there are so many uh, people who have been in so much pain that they didn't even know they were in pain. There are so many people that were suffering from psychological problems and did not realize how much trouble they are in. Even in my neighborhood, uh, I can see people sometimes at 3 o'clock at night chasing death, trying to get uh, drugs, trying to, again, put themselves out of pain. And so we cannot look at them as collateral damage. We have to address them. Again, these are our neighbors, these are our friends, these are our church members, these are our fellow students, these are our fellow workers. And so I'm looking forward, and I want to thank all of the associations that have joined us today. Uh, we can do this. And, um, Again, I thank you, and now uh, we will hear from the distinguished ranking member of our committee, Mr. Jordan.